This week on Epic TV Weekly, a new route on Mount Everest, free skier Sean Pettit, the Billabong Pipe Masters, and we've got a brand new pair of K2 skis to give away. The Billabong Pipe Masters is the last event on the ASP World Tour and it's consistently one of the best. Epic TV surf editor Dave Mailman tells us what to expect. Pipeline is such a critical and intense wave that, um, you know, when you're out there, there really is nowhere to hide. And it's time for the Billabong Pipeline Masters once again. It is the event that all the surfers on the ASP World Championship Tour want to win. The most prestigious tube riding event in the world. This year, the event will decide the ASP World Championship title. Mick Fanning, if he wants to win his third world title, has to win the event. Kelly Slater, to have a chance at winning his 12th world title, has to at least make the quarterfinals. And if Kelly makes the quarterfinals, Joel Parkinson has to finish one spot ahead of Kelly to win his first world title. For more information, check out daily.epictv.com in the surfing column under Pipe Dreams. Free skier Sean Pettit was the youngest person ever sponsored by Red Bull when they picked him up at just 13 years old. Since then, he's won more awards before turning 20 than most people win in a lifetime. Sean Pettit, welcome to Epic TV. Thanks, man. How did you start skiing so well so early? Um, <laughs> good question. Growing up in Whistler, uh, played a big part in that. You know, we used to have a lot of really good terrain around here and a big, uh, a big natural playground to really shape that kind of skier, you know? Red Bull sponsored you when you were just 13 years old. Did jacking Red Bull at such an early age affect you in any way, good or bad? <laughs> I'd never do it. I'd never do it. Coming to me at such a young age it really helped me uh, just with the opportunities. So, you know, they, they would send me on uh, film trips that, you know, at 13 I didn't really know um, how to set it myself. We just got we a collection of individuals into our uh, service. Tell us a little bit about the movie and what is the craziest story you have from that from filming that video? The whole story kind of thing about the movie is just about being with your friends and having fun. One of the craziest stories I have from filming that movie definitely wasn't uh, wasn't the funnest to start with. We showed up in Alaska and we actually ended up being being shut down for the first couple days because um, there was a big avalanche that ended up burying two people. And uh, so that kind of put a damper on our trip, and we were pretty nervous to go in, and, you know, having to film and ski for two weeks and really perform well. But it turned out that uh, you know uh, the conditions subsided, and it all turned out really good, and we had an awesome trip. What was different about the whole concept of that film than than other videos that you've worked on? Yeah, I think I think just the fact that you know approaching a, a movie about just, just trying to really focus on just having fun and and not not having to be too serious, serious about, you know, making something too crazy about it or be too serious. You're pretty much leading the progression of the sport right now. Where do you think things are heading? It's hard to say where it's ever really going to go. And obviously the progression in, in tricks and lines it just keeps getting bigger and, and better. And just, I'm just going to do my best to stay with that progression and keep pushing as hard as I can personally. Do you have any specific things you hope to accomplish this season? A lot of the stuff I want to do and you know involves, you know, working with the camera guys to do some new cool creative stuff that uh, not only just focuses on what tricks and what big lines you're doing, but you know how it's shot and and uh, and how it's perceived uh, in post production, so how it looks afterwards. What we're doing is skiing and we're entertaining, so Sean, best of luck this season and hope you to see you out in Chamonix soon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Have a good one, guys. Dennis Arubko is a master of high altitude climbing. He's the eighth person to ever climb the world's 8,000 meter peaks, and this March, he's heading to Mount Everest to put up a new route. Dennis Arubko, welcome to Epic TV. Thanks, nice to meet you. You plan to climb a new route on Everest in Alpine style with Alexei Bolotov. My plan, just to, to attempt this, to do, uh, because in 2000, 13 years, 12 years ago, I climbed by normal route to Everest, but 
It's an interesting idea to do something new, to develop uh, uh, experience in mountain. If you will check information, uh, nobody did uh, new route in Everest on Everest in Alpine style. When you say Alpine style, can you explain to our audience what that means? Alpine style, it means something that you climb as in Alps from the bottom of mount, from the beginning till summit uh, without uh, any returnings, uh, without uh, any um, oxygen, without any uh, preparation, without any help of any uh, other people, for example, Sherpas. First, uh, climbers uh, who arrived in Himalayas, they tried to do uh, ascents by easy roads. They were looking for slopes, for ridges, where it's possible to approach easily. But after, were coming another climbers. And they were looking to do something better, much more interesting than previous climbers. And they, this is sportive motives. Try to do, try to be better, um, but not personally, just to do, to do something better. That's it for our show this week. But before we go, I want to give away this brand new pair of K2 Side Stash Rolling Stone Edition skis. All you have to do to win them is tell us the name of the skier in this segment from one of the newest films on Epic TV, Grand Bazaar. Send us the name in a private message to the Epic TV Facebook page. And remember, you've got to be a member of Epic TV to win. Until next time, charge hard and take chances.